at launch or rather uh, the, 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 the all right thank you very much tobias chanji for that update now let's talk business despite the ongoing anti-government protest in the country a delegation of saudi business leaders are in the country to explore business opportunities in different sectors of the economy from agriculture energy mining and labor amongst others jimmy mbogo attended the opening of the b2b business engagement and now joins us with more good afternoon jimmy Indeed, thank you very much and a very good afternoon to you to Noyes. As you rightfully say, today we are having discussions around business and business opportunities across the... Uh uh, that, that is across Saudi and uh, UAE region rather and of course uh, there is a lot of business uh, conversations that are happening here just looking for different opportunities across the country and also in different sectors we're talking sectors of energy we're talking uh, within the labor market we're talking in agriculture all manner of uh, sectors and also just trying to showcase Kenya as a potential place for investment now to, able, to be able to help us understand the aim of this forum we are, I will be speaking to John Chepkime who is the CEO and uh, who is the acting CEO for Ken Invest. Thank you so much for making time to speak to KTN. What do you expect at the end of it? This is a return match uh, following uh, an investment promotion tour that the government of Kenya made to GCC countries earlier in the year where we met some of the top Saudi companies and pitched to them investment opportunities in Kenya. And therefore they've taken time to evaluate the country and go through those opportunities and they are, therefore they, they are here to actually meet those companies, those businesses those projects and programs that they are considering to invest in. These are some of the top uh, Saudi companies, 25 of them, worth 140 billion, uh, 140 trillion Kenya shillings. So these are great investors, heavyweights, and we are looking to close some of the deals and begin to see our foreign direct investment flowing. All right, because actually it's a good thing that you've talked about closing some of those deals. What I wanted to know is have you received any interest from this, uh, uh, from these companies, any sort of commitment so far? We could say that we have intent in agriculture, we have intent in infrastructure, we have intent in energy, we have intent in um, livestock. So, so, so those are some of the opportunities that you are seeking to progress. And we hope going forward we should be able to close some of those deals. All right, I'm sure the number, a number of Kenyans who, uh, who are going to watch this, the biggest question to them is how will this benefit me? How will this uh, benefit me, a graduate who does not have a job? When investors come to the country, they set up businesses. Once they've set up businesses, they will start recruiting and employing. So ordinary Kenyan out there who is looking for a job will have a high chances of getting employment because investors are coming there and they are setting up uh, companies in the country. So that will, in, in, will actually benefit um, the ordinary young Kenyan. Now to the rest of the population, investment in different sectors means growth for example agriculture we've had challenges on the livestock sector with regards to marketing and even managing some of the challenges that come with drought and the rest once you have an investor in that sector you in streamline that value chain and you really build some um, strong businesses to see that the ordinary farmer can begin to see return on investment let me just illustrate this look at the tea sector in kenya some of the major multinational and investors have set up as stable companies. Now small scale holders are benefiting from those established businesses because they've opened the market and they are structured. Yeah. We want to see this cutting across all the identified value chain that the government has uh, earmarked. For example, the leather value chain, uh, we have uh, the automotive value chain, we have the cotton value chain, we even have the tea value chain, all those uh, different value chains that the government, including construction as earmarked, will benefit from this kind of investment that come into the country. All right, uh, June, June, before I let you go, of course, the question of policy and taxation framework, uh, and this is actually an issue that came up during AMCHAM. A lot of investors were saying we, we would want to invest in Kenya, but there's a lot of uh, volatility as far as uh, tax policy goes. Has this been addressed? If you notice that some of these issues were addressed in the finance bill that is now disputed, and therefore we hope that once that is sorted out, we'll be able to have a more uh, predictable uh, tax regime in the country. But most importantly, some of those programs will be sorted out in some of the special economic zones that we've set out in the country. Some of our aggregation centers will begin to sort that out. The special economic zone will sort that out, the export promotion zone, 
zone should be able to begin to help solve some of those challenges. So I will hand it over back to you, Noah, and of course we'll be giving you more details as to what transpired here, and of course the issues of labor uh, uh, of course are going to take center stage in some of the conversations. We've seen a number of agency and people who have been taking part in exporting labor to the Saudi uh, nation also just here trying to look for business opportunities and of course we'll be able to package that for our viewers later on but for now back to you all right thank you very much Jimmy on my